This is a DC 3 volt electromagnetic transmitter, but I think it might be more fun to describe it as a high voltage electromagnetic turret defense desktop toy. It's another one of those gifts that I was given by my brother over the holiday season, and this is a fun little kit as it contains some electronic components to solder, but also a plastic project box to assemble as well. So let's take a look inside and get started. So here's our project box kit. I'm just gonna put this to one side for now and I think we'll assemble that nearer the end of the project. Okay, so we have two PCBs here that have been printed. These ones are looking fairly simple actually in both of these examples. So we can see them both here. We have the transformer here that needs to be connected on this board here. And we also have a battery pack, so this requires two AA batteries. And we also have a little bag of components, which we'll look at more closely in a second, but that is a really chunky capacitor in there. Most importantly, we have some instructions here, and these contain all of the parts and the PCB overviews, as well as some step-by-step -step instructions as well. And fortunately, these are in both Chinese and English, so I will be able to read them fairly easily. Okay, we have a fairly small number of components. We've got our resistors down here, a few LEDs in a few different colors, a switch, some transistors, a diode, some items for our turret defense system to use. Within the battery box, we also have this plastic tube for these items to go through, a secondary transformer here, some wires, a rocker switch, and this particularly large capacitor. This one is a thousand microfarads at 100 volts, so there will definitely be some power stepping going on here. The capacitor is a little bit dented, which bothers me slightly, but we will see how it goes. For now, I'm just going to pop these out of the way as we won't need these until we experiment at the end to see if the circuit works. Let's take a little extra look at these components here. So these are 9013, another 9013, and a third 9013. So all of these actually appear to be the same, which is quite nice. If we look at the instructions here though, we can see we only expect two triodes, as they're labeled here, or transistors, Q1 and Q2, in 9013. So I think we might actually have a spare transistor here. According to the nicely illustrated color instructions, the first thing we should do is fit our resistors. And so that's what I'm going to do to start with. Okay, so we seem to have a few spare resistors here that I haven't had to use, so that's interesting. One thing that was notable is there are some pretty thick traces on here, and so there wasn't always enough heat, and actually these pads here are gonna be even worse. So I might go ahead and turn up my soldering iron a little bit. I do usually run it a bit hotter than 290 actually, but um, I turned it down recently because I didn't need it actually that high. So maybe we'll go up to 330, which is more what I would usually use. I'm not sure how good the temperature control on this is, although I have verified that it does actually adjust the temperature, so that will be useful. So hiding amongst the resistors, I found an additional diode as well that we're going to need to install. And the instructions here are clear that diodes are next, so you need to install those right now. Next we have our LEDs and triodes or transistors.
Now we have to do the inductance coil just here, and it says we need to solder it as colored in the diagram. So here is our coil, and we have copper windings at the top, and then it wants to put the yellow windings in L2 and the red windings in L1. Next we have our capacitor, 1000 microfarad, and we need to make sure we put the wires in the correct way round. It also says we need to weld three wires, K2 negative, K1 positive, and K1 negative here. So I think we should go ahead and do that as well. So it doesn't say to do the K2 positive just yet, so I have actually left that wire loose for now. Next, it says we need to solder in this electromagnetic coil. And here it wants us to make sure that the soldered connections are on the bottom. Now we have to take two more wires and pop them onto the smaller circuit board and then pass them through the holes on the circuit board. Okay, at this point it tells us we need to install the button on the acrylic shell, so that means we're going to have to look at the shell. Okay, so one wire needs to connect to the button. And it says the other wire is connected to the circuit board on K2 minus. Okay, and then it says one side of this switch is connected to K1 plus and one side to K1 negative. Okay, so next we have to do the battery box. Next it says we need to bolt down the small PCB onto the top. Okay, so I've assembled the case now and everything's fitted inside. The last thing to do here is to fix this cylinder inside of here. Now, to do so, we have some double-sided tape. We're now gonna need some power. It says we can put one of the items inside the cylinder here and press the power button to see if this works. But first up, we're going to need to install some batteries. I've got two rechargeable batteries here, so I'm going to try these and see how these work. 
So I don't know how effective this is going to be, so I'm going to face it well away from me and not try and catch anything. We're going to put this inside here. We're going to turn on, and then it says when we have the blue light, press the round button to launch. Yeah, so the blue lights now come on. Okay, interesting. Kind of neat. We've got a few more of these. So it says that this blue light is the 50% metric, and it seems there's a red light over here for 100%, so it might be worth waiting a little longer and seeing what changes. Still nothing yet. That was definitely more exciting though. Let's leave it a little bit longer. And we can actually see in the instructions here that we need to wait 10 to 30 seconds for the blue light to change. And it says the red LED light may not full charge storage state and may not light. So after about 30 seconds, the red LED may not light, but we probably still have acquired enough charge in a capacitor to have an effective operation. Very exciting. Okay, that's lots of fun. So I'm going to need to go and collect up some of those items I've pinged around the room. But I hope you found this project super interesting and fun, and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next video.